record this. So today's going to be really short. We're just going to do some last minute um, review about the testing process. I'm going to give you like a very basic kind of like guide to going through the rhetorical analysis. Um, at this point, you know it, but it'll be like a little bit of a refresher maybe um, and then we will be done so I'm guessing maybe 20 minutes for this for this little meeting here um, let's go through your assignments for today first you have a discussion thread where you're talking about what you think the best tips for this kind of essay are mostly that's to help you remember what your best tips are because that's different for everyone and uh, but it's also to see other people's kind of input and you can get some ideas from them if they're doing something that uh, you maybe haven't thought of yet um, and then you have like a step-by-step -step guide now the way that this will be most effective as if it is specific so you know exactly what to do like so if you just say step one read the prompt step two write the essay that will not actually help you on the test right so try and go through your process of writing this thing so that when it comes time to actually doing the timed version you've already gone through all the steps and it's like it'll be second nature to you because of how much we've practiced it but it'll be a good reminder in case you freeze at the last minute for the test um, okay, everybody should have gotten this testing guide at some point, but let's just look at a couple key things here. Number one, you should have gotten an e-ticket by now. Today was the day they would be sending those out. So let me, let me see like thumbs up who has checked their email and gotten their e-ticket. Kimberly's gotten hers, and Grace, and lots of people who don't have their camera. I'm just assuming you've gotten yours. All right, if you haven't gotten your e-ticket, something might be up with your email. You can log into your myap.collegeboard and you can get that e-ticket there as well. If you also don't see any ticket there, then something has gone wrong with, with like your testing registration. Um, and I just don't think that's the case for any of you. So if you aren't seeing an e-ticket today, email me. We got to work that out. Don't wait until tomorrow or the next day to email me. Um, so you're going to get into the test and you're going to put in that e-ticket and that's going to be the way that you can take the exam. Let's also look at page 21 here. All right, here's what the day of the exam will be like. Like these are the steps that you need to take before you actually take this thing. If you have not reviewed your contact information by now, you're behind. So make sure on my EP you have reviewed that contact info, made sure that that is your email that you want to do everything with. Um, check your tech has turned out to be kind of important. You guys are kind of lucky because I've been through this with AP Lit now. Uh, but basically you need to make sure that your browser is up to date. So um, if you're using Chrome, check for updates. Um, there is actually in this guide that they've given you, there's a page that tells you how to do that. But you want to make sure that um, everything that you're using has all the updates because that's what has been preventing people from pressing submit. At least that's what AP College Board says, but who knows, they're, they're a little bit corrupt. No, I don't know. <laughs> but basically, you just want to make sure that that tech is up to date. They have sent you an exam demo. And I got a couple emails from AP Lit day of the test that said something about, asked me, what does this test look like? And to me, that tells me you did not do the demo. You haven't done your due diligence yet, right? So if you go through the demo, you're gonna know exactly what it looks like. And I think that just eases tensions completely. Like if you have practiced submitting, then when it comes day of, you don't have to worry about the tech and that's awesome. Number four is gather what you need for each exam. I am going to put that up on a whiteboard here. What I, what I think you need, you might want more than this, but. Here are the few things that I think you need. You have done vocabulary words. Print out your vocab words and have them in front of you. Now, we used to do word of the day back when, back in the ancient days when we used to actually see each other. Uh, you can have those in front of you. I think that would be useful. But these are all those rhetorical analysis vocab words that we have discussed in class. There are lots of others. You could find lists online for rhetorical analysis words. Um, but 
I don't think it's in your best interest to get hung up on those vocab words because you can just describe what is happening in front of you. And the most successful rhetorical analyses that I've been reading are ones that have done strategies that are kind of unique. Like, um, you know, they've in the Martin Luther King essay, for example, they use storytelling as a strategy. That was never a vocab word that I gave you, but that is something that he does in that essay. And so, you know, you don't have to have a Latin term for something in order to talk about it. But having those terms in front of you, if you do notice something, uh, that would be really handy. Okay, so print those out. Print out the tone words worksheet that I gave you with, or not worksheet, but just that list of tone words. Having that in front of you will be so useful. I, you know, I have made English my life, but when it comes down to doing a timed thing, the only rhetoric, like the only words that I can think of to describe tone are like positive, negative, happy, sad. <laughs> and so you want more words than that so that you can get at the specifics, have that sheet down in front of you because it's always a good idea to talk about tone. Um, and then you can print out the step-by-step -step guide that you're doing today so that if you get stuck and you're like, oh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do, you can go to that guide and look at it. And then I wouldn't print out much more than that. I think that that's a good kind of manageable set of things to have on the desk in front of you, ready to go if you need them. All right. Any questions about that so far? Awesome. Let's go back to this. Um, so that's gather what you need. And then last, receive your exam confirmation and e-ticket emails. That's where you are today, where you want to make sure that you've got the e-ticket ready to go. Okay, now let's go to page 35. I'm just kind of, this document is very long, so I'm just trying to like simplify it for you. Okay, day of the test, Wednesday, in two days. 30 minutes before that test starts will be 1130 for you guys. Our test starts at noon. So at 1130, you are going to check in. Basically, you use that e-ticket. E They're going to give you a code. You check into that. You are going to complete your identity information, and then you wait for the exam to begin automatically. Now, I will tell you, um, you, you putting in that identity info is probably going to take you like five minutes, and then you're going to sit there for 25 minutes stressing out about the test. If For those of you who have done one of these already, like that's what it feels like, right? You're just like, oh my gosh, I just wanted to start. I still think you should go 30 minutes ahead of time. We do that in person too. Like I, and when we do it in person, I walk the students down and you have to sit there. Actually, it's more like 45 minutes for the in-person one. You just have to sit there and like, I don't know, meditate for a second, but it makes, it makes sure that it, if something goes wrong, like you've got a half hour to work it out. So, um, check in 30 minutes ahead. Okay. And then you've got 40, the question will appear and you've got 45 minutes to write the actual essay in class. When we did it, it was always 40 minutes. And this time you've got five extra minutes. So that's really nice because then when that 45 minutes is over, you have five minutes to submit your response. Um, so that, it, it, within that five minutes, if something goes wrong there, um, you've got five minutes to kind of work through it. Um, so one thing that is, has been reported as very stressful with these tests is that the timer is going to be on your screen the whole time, just staring you in the face, ticking down, right? And, and that kind of sucks. But it's in your best interest to keep an eye on that timer and kind of time things out because this 45 minute window is very strict. It's gonna cut you off mid sentence, right? So you've got to finish it within that time period. And in fact, like aim for 43 minutes so that you can kind of have a second to breathe. Then you've got five minutes to submit. Now, last week, AP Lit, there were two students that had problems with the submit button. They finished their test, wrote the whole essay, and then it wouldn't let them submit. And so uh, I guess that was a problem nationwide because they just sent us an email today that said for you guys, if you have that issue, if some technical difficulty comes up and you're clicking submit and AP says, oh, sorry, error, you've already written it in the essay in a Google doc and it shows you that in the demo. And so all you need to do is there will be a button that says submit via email. And if you do it within that five minutes still, like if, I think they'll probably give you like a couple minutes after that, you know, within seven minutes of, of the end of the test, then you can submit that essay via email and they will count it. They won't make you do the makeup test. And they, I 
think, I, I'm not positive, but I think they'll send you a confirmation that they were able to do it that way. Um, if you're unable also to submit it via email, let's say your internet, like the lawnmower runs over your internet line or whatever, um, then you have to do the makeup test in June, but you still do get a chance to do the makeup test if something goes completely wrong with your internet. Okay, so far, any questions? Um, so are we just supposed to like split our screen and have like the Google Doc and then the test thing and then like we'll copy and paste it all over? Yes, that's how I would do it. Um, I would have, you'll have, and they tell you you must do it in two windows. So yeah, you'll have the test kind of like in one corner with the prompt and everything. And then you will have a Google Doc or a word processor or whatever you use and you'll copy and paste it. That's how I would do it. Some people do it where they, um, they submit a link to their Word doc, um, and, and that works fine. Oh, Sam, what do you mean you don't need two separate windows? Oh, different tabs. Oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. But then you wouldn't be able to look at the timer as you go, right? Maybe that's a... Yeah, I like looking at the timer. I don't okay. understand if you're typing it in a Google Doc, how does it stop you typing if you run out of time? Like, are you saying you have to copy and paste it within the 45 minutes? No, you'll have to copy it. You'll have to copy and paste it within that five minutes. Actually, I don't know the answer to that. Does someone who took the history test know the answer to that one? So once the like 45 minutes is up, something pops up on your screen and it's like you have five minutes left. So then you can either convert your doc into like a PDF or something and submit that directly which I have found to be the easiest, but you can also just copy and paste it in. And that all happens in the five minutes. So you can have up to the 45 minutes to write because then something will pop up on your screen telling you time is up. But like if you're in your doc, it's not going to stop you because the doc is separate from the test. But like Got the it. test screen will stop you. Got it. Got it. Okay. That answers your question, right, Reagan? Thank you. So Jane. if you do just want to copy and paste it, and it's like five minutes is up. Can you no longer copy and like, will it stop letting you type it on the actual test? Does that make sense? Like, so can I no longer copy and paste it after the 45 minutes? Is that right? Um, Jaden, will you answer that? Um, after the 45 minutes, like that's how much time you should take actually doing the test. The five minutes after that is when you can submit it. And it so lets like, you copy and paste it. Yeah, so after the 45 minutes, it's just going to pop up on your screen saying you have five minutes left, start submitting now, and then you can do all that stuff. So once the 45 minutes is up, you still have time to do all the submitting. So, so technically, it's more like if it, yeah, technically, if it took you 46 minutes, you still You'd be fine. Start. Okay, okay. That's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, any other questions? We have Jaden here as a resource. I know a bunch of you took the history test, right? Um, did anyone actually, can I hear, did anyone have trouble on a past AP test submitting and they have to do the makeup exam? No. I might have. Oh, wait, who? Oh, Kylie, I'm so sorry. So I think, I mean, but for this one, um, we're, good news is that you could do it now via email and we just have this one test question and Sam didn't have any issues. Okay, good. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing it's like a, a seven to 11% of students are having some issues with that. I think it depends on where they are in the country though. And for us, it's been a, a smaller percentage of students, but pe people have had trouble. And so if a technical difficulty happens to you, I don't know how you guys are. It's probably just my like crazy anxiety, <laughs> but uh, take a deep breath, uh, know that you can do the makeup test and then submit via email too. Um, okay, let's see. Do you know if sending the essay we wrote through email only applies to the test this week? Yeah, it does, Kylie. I'm sorry. They're not letting us go back and do it for the last week's tests. It's sort of just a bad luck to you guys, but moving forward, it'll be, it'll be easier. Um, I know because one of my students, like, she was like, this is the best essay I've ever written, and I couldn't submit it, and she's going to have to do it again, and it's like the worst feeling, but um, luckily it's only 45 minutes and not three and a half hours, right? So we can look at the bright side. <laughs> um, okay. There's one more thing I want to show you on this, which is exam security. Um, so I was kind of like, 
patrolling Twitter during the lit test because I was curious about how that was going to be handled. Nobody posted during the test. Like no one was like, oh, this is what my prompt is about during the test. And they say, that, and I don't know, you know, if this is true. 100% true if it's like 100% feasible, but let's act like they have the best detection software in the world. They will be able to see if you are posting to social media during the actual exam. So during the exam, don't get sidetracked, don't get frustrated and like text a friend or something, just do the exam and then be done. After that, they've never been able to control people talking about their test. <laughs> I mean, you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be illegal to do that. Uh, but yeah, there will be tons of memes and stuff afterward. Unfortunately, there's like 30 different prompts that they're going to give you. So the chances that you have the same prompt as your friend in the class are actually really small. So it's not going to really benefit you to talk to people anyway. Um, so yeah, just be, just be aware all the, all the cheating rules apply because you don't want anyone's void. Okay. I think that is all for like the review of the tech stuff. Does anybody have any more questions right now about that? And again, just do the demo. Make sure you do the demo ahead of time because the demo is also going to let you know if you have, um, if your browser is not up to date and so that you can't can't submit it um okay all right let's ask more questions oh Sorry, i have so many questions um when we click on the link to go to the essay is it just going to be like the how it's been before to print it like on your website like will it click and then that whole thing comes up good question um so the printing stuff i for the lit test they said that there was not a clear button to print. And so they right clicked and printed, but it did cut off some of the words so that they always, they still had the prompt open so that they could make sure and, and see it. It cut off some words at the bottom of the page. That's so annoying. They told me that there would be a print button on the actual test. Anyone who took the history test, I don't think you have to print those, right? So I don't know if anybody has, um, has tried. No, I'm not hearing from anyone. Um, so yeah, what I would do is right click and print. I still think it's really good idea to print um, because then you have the annotations in front of you and everything, but it is going to be different than ours. The screen will be. And I think on the demo, you'll be able to see exactly what that looks like again. And on the demo, you should be able to try printing too, actually. Um, yeah. You set up the, like, where, like the canvas, you can like print it off and then start the timer though, right? Like. The timer oh yeah no you won't be able to do that on this as soon as the test comes out the timer starts <laughs> so if your printer takes five minutes then it's not a good idea to print <laughs> all right um so here are some just very basic steps that you can follow read the prompt itself that's the question at the top because it will tell you the focus. It's going to tell you, it's going to give you hints about the argument. It's going to tell you the year. It's going to tell you the focus it wants to take. So I, at this point, like we're very used to this format of questions. And so you might just be tempted to skip down to the text and read the text and write an analysis. But occasionally there will be something in there like focus on this specific part of it, focus on contrasts or something. And you'll want to know what it says. So read the prompt. Then you read the passage carefully, print if you can. And what you want to do is do quick annotations. So you don't want to like spend all your time looking very, very in detail because you got to get to writing, right? So what I would do is underline really important words to you. Underline the, the micro kind of diction choices that people are using in their in their analysis or in their rhetoric and so that you can find those again quickly. And you might make a little code for yourself in the step by step project today. Like you might say, I'm going to circle any irony. I'm going to square metaphors and I'm going to underline tone words, something like that so that you're moving quickly. And then lastly, you are going to well, you write your thesis. Right. Um, write your thesis, like a real quick a draft of a thesis, like at the top of your Google Docs so you know exactly where to start. And then you start writing the paper. 
And that means that when you get to the end of your introduction, at the end of the intro paragraph, you rewrite the thesis and you can make it perfect so that it ends up being the second draft of your thesis statement. Um, but you knew where you were going all along with the intro paragraph. That's how I do it. You obviously can do it however you want. If you want to just start writing the intro and lead up to a thesis, that works great too. Um, and then for your body paragraphs, focus on macro, which is the structure stuff, and then focus on micro, which is the diction stuff. Now I'm seeing in the, in the last essays that you guys wrote, you guys were doing a great job. These were on lab girl, focusing on the macro stuff. You were talking about rhetorical questions. You were talking about shifts in tone. You were talking about all of these like big things that the writer was doing. Macro just means like the wide picture, right? That she starts with rhetorical questions and then moves on to actual questions, mimicking the scientific method, you know, start with the hypothesis, move to the, the specifics and the testing. Um, that was all really good what people kind of dropped off on was the micro when you guys wrote about the imagery stuff with uh martin luther king you did a great job with the micro and less of a good job with macro and i'm just talking about sort of like overall so what you want to keep in mind is make some comments about the overall structure but also focus on the details focusing on diction is what is going to make your paper unique so i want to just show you that's our that's our kind of steps i want to show you a couple people, their paragraphs that I think did this really well. Okay, so we're gonna start here. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So this first one is from Jaden. She has a really long paragraph here, which probably should be broken up, but we're gonna just look at the beginning of it because I think she does a really good job here. I don't know how to pronounce this woman's name, but I'm gonna say Jaren. Jaren, Jaren. Jaren begins her prologue discussing why she chose to study life on land rather than life in the ocean. So she's talking about those macro things, the structure. She begins her prologue. So she's talking about this is at the beginning of her essay. That's a big kind of point about rhetoric. But then she gets small again. She said she explains that the ratio of plants to animals on land is close to 1,000 to 1. That's a specific detail from um, Jaren's text. By stating this fact, she establishes an astonished tone. Great tone word. It's specific. It's not just positive. It's astonished. Specifically, she does so with uses of words like staggering. By using this word, she makes it clear that it isn't just a big difference. It's a huge difference. So I'm going to stop there, but you see how she makes a big point about the structure where Jaren starts, but then she makes a smaller point about the word staggering that is used to establish a tone. So that's exactly what I'm talking about with kind of like balancing your observations about structure and your observations about diction. Always you're going to want some direct evidence in your essay that's in small little manageable chunks where you can talk about the word choice. So word choice, word choice, word, cho word choice. I can say that like a million times. Don't use the word word choice. Actually, that'll mess you up. Don't use that word. Like they don't use word choice. Every writer chooses words, right? But you want to talk about their word choice. I hope that makes sense. Okay, the other one I want to look at is Zoe's. Went down to Z. There we go. In addition is the paragraph. Okay, so let's look here at the way that Zoe is paying attention to word choice. We're gonna read her whole paragraph right here that starts in addition. In addition, Hope Jaren uses a list of questions to show the complexity and importance of her field work. Now, see how that list of questions, that's a micro, or sorry, a macro kind of observation. That is about sort of a big thing about the structure of the essay. Jaren starts with a confusing statement and echoes it in the form of a leading question. She then goes into a list of questions that gets more and more specific as she goes on to examine the complexity. For example, she says exactly what shade of green, sit, healthy, important, irrelevant, alive, why? She starts semi-broad as she examines the surface level, like the shade of green. This is important because it shows that many people really only see the surface level of her work. As she gets to the end of the list, the questions decrease in size. Like she's talking about the actual number of like letters in this, right? That's what I think um, that they are decreased. She's not like saying 
exactly what shade of green, like the, that kind of a long question. The questions decrease in size, which proves how narrow her work is, but the complexity of the questions are so much deeper. Like at the end, you get to this question, why are plants alive? That's a very deep question. Her work becomes of the utmost importance when she examines these facts. So I think what works really well about Zoe's paper, again, is she's looking at the big long, like, or the big picture stuff about the structure, the questions and where they appear. Now there's a list of questions, but then she gets really narrow and she's talking about the actual word choice in the questions themselves. And that's what you're trying to balance in a rhetorical analysis. Sam, I agree. It was very strong and powerful diction. <laughs> Please don't say that either. Actually, that, did you say that when I was talking about word choice? <laughs> strong diction, powerful diction. No, let me give you a couple hints about speedy rhetorical strategies you can use that are not strong, powerful diction. All right, number one, look for the metaphors. If you find a metaphor, that's a gift because we practiced it so much talking about the specifics of metaphors. It worked really well. Along with that, imagery that is not metaphors works the same way where you find a specific image and you tell me about the physical qualities of that image and how it's producing certain rhetorical effects. Um, it's always a good idea to look for repetition. If you feel like there is something interesting you can say about repetition like for example when zoe was talking about the repeated questions she found a way to say something very interesting about why um hope jarin would repeat those questions right and then the last one oh well, actually two more it's always a great idea to find irony if you can find a place in the essay where the writer appears to be snarky a little sarcastic like in remember when you did florence kelly and she said like children have the pitiful privilege and how that's an oxymoron for a privilege to be pitiful we've found a bit of irony there and irony is a great way to discover tone so find anywhere where the author appears to be being sarcastic um, that's often like subtle and interesting and last but not least look for the shifts shifts in tone argument or rhetorical strategy if she moves from tons of questions to tons of a description that's a shift in the strategy that she's using and honestly if you're looking for all of those things you should be good you should find those things in the piece of rhetoric that you're given um and and if those are the only things you know about rhetorical analysis you could talk about it last thing which is like a a, a don't list remember that pathos ethos and logos are not strategies, they are effects. You can't use pathos, well, you can use pathos, you, but it's better to say the author develops pathos or the author creates pathos. It's an effect. So you say the author creates pathos by using imagery and metaphors. Right? So just remember that by themselves, logos, ethos, pathos are not strategies. You're trying to talk about the language choice the writer makes in order to create those three effects. And if you never mention logos, ethos, pathos in the essay, that is okay. If you're like, I'm not really sure how to at this point, um, then that's okay. All right, that was my super fast last minute review. Do you have any questions about any of that stuff or about anything? Are you feeling confident? Tell me in the chat box so I hear from everyone. How confident are you? Scale of one to 10, how confident are you? One being not confident at all. 10 being, I know I'm gonna get a five. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, Keaton is a yeehaw. <sighs> Sevens, eight, sevens, and nine from autumn. I'm just ready to be done. It doesn't matter. Just finish it. Yeah, I get that. Oh, I'm happy. All right. If you're feeling like your confidence is a six or below, then we're going to talk um, because I got to get you up to where your confidence actually should be. As I am reading your rhetorical analyses, I think you're going to pass. I really do. I think everyone's going to pass. Um, 
and uh, you're terrified about submitting Kylie, I get that. Luckily now you can email too. So, um, all right, then we're gonna finish this negative eight. Oh no, <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna finish this meeting. And if you have any questions that come up, email me. If you are feeling scared at the last minute and want to meet for a couple minutes for a pep talk, email me. We can we can meet one on one this way. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm excited for you guys. I'm gonna really plead for you to meet me again on Thursday for like 10 minutes to tell me how it went. But then after that, we are done with AP language. This is the last graded canvas work today. That's, that's it. So hopefully I see like a bunch of you. I know I got my seniors, but hopefully I see a bunch of you next year in, in lit and hopefully in person, but okay. Um, then I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Have a good day.